Hello everybody, it's Lewis here from Physics Online. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay updated with all the videos I'm doing to help you with both GCSE and A-level physics. Now, I'm filming this video on the 2nd of July 2020 in the morning and I've just seen the plans for your exams next year in 2021. So particularly relevant for current year 10 and current year 12 students. Now, this is the proposed plans, but obviously things will change and things will develop. So this has been released by Ofqual and this is really pertinent to people in England doing exams in England. I'm not quite sure what's happening in Wales, Northern Ireland, and also those doing international A-levels and international GCSEs, but I suspect a lot of them might follow the way that they're doing it in England. So these are the proposed changes to your assessments going forward. And this is the consultation phase, which means Ofqual have put out this plan and they want your feedback if you're students, if you're parents, and especially if you're teachers. And there's basically a two week window when you can respond to the changes that they've proposed. Now, I wanna talk in particular about the GCSE physics and science, and also the A-level and AS physics exams. And actually there's a lot of stuff in this. It's a 60 page document, it gets, I say quite boring, there's quite a lot of text, but I've, I've read it already and I just thought I'd show you something which is probably the most important thing. Um, there's a table, if, as you scroll through, that has all of your subjects. So if you're a GCSE student, this has information about all the subjects that you're currently doing. It's got how it's currently assessed and the proposals going forward to 2021. Now, um, let's look in a bit of detail at GCSE physics because to be honest, the changes are not that big, okay? Previously, you had exams at the end and that's gonna happen again in 2021. There will still be exams and the main thing is that they're not going to be changing what they're asking questions about. There will be the same amount of content. The reason for this is that basically it's all important. Um, it's very hard to get rid of content that isn't seen as important for you to learn. You know, science is a core subject. The other thing is if they were to take some content away, that would really affect lots of schools because every school teaches things in a different order. And actually, even within your school, you might be learning things in a different order to another group if there's a rotation of subjects or whatever. So they're gonna keep all the content um, to be examined at the end of year 11. The change is about the practical experiments that you previously would physically carry out in the lab. Now, there might be things maybe where you're looking at extension of springs or there's trolleys being accelerated across tables. Now, you still need to know about these because they explain a lot of the physics content that you're learning, but now there's no requirement for you to actually carry out that practical. Instead, it can be done as a demo by the teacher at the front of the class, or you can watch an online video the kind of thing that I make. So I will be doing lots more videos about the practical skills that you need to know about ready for your exams in 2021. So rather than doing the practical, you can just watch somebody do it, but you still have to understand about what that practical is actually showing. So how that relates to the science that you're learning and also maybe how to get good valid results and then how to analyze that data. So really um, the changes at GCSE aren't that significant for science. When it comes to A-level, again, there's a massive table that has lots and lots of subjects here. Um, so first of all, AS Physics. So this is if you're in year 11 and you're about to start A-levels in September, there's basically no change to the content. Everything you do in AS Physics is really important because it gets built upon further in the second year for your full A-level. So, um, you know, forces, uh, waves, electricity, the stuff that people did previously, you're going to be doing again. The difference is though, that rather than having to complete these practical activities, you're allowed to, again, just like at GCSE, watch the teacher do a demo. So that means if there's a standing wave thing, rather than everybody working in groups and kind of getting all their horrible germs over each other and touching all the equipment, instead that can be done as a demo where the teacher might set up at the front of the lab. You can come around, you can see how the equipment's set up, you understand how that explains the physics principles, but you don't have to physically do every single practical yourself. Okay, and that means there's uh, less pressure on teaching time and also, you know, helps with a kind of, um, you know, stopping the spread of this virus. A-level physics, again, they're not taking any content out. So if you're in year 12 at the moment and you've been watching my live streams um, and actually kind of engaging what, with what I've done already, 
going forward into year 13, you still need to know everything, okay? There's no reduction in the content. And that's because, you know, it's all done for a reason. And again, different exam boards teach different things and different schools do stuff in a different order. So going forward to 2021, your exams will be about everything. And again, I've got loads of material that can help you hopefully learn a lot of that stuff. One change is that um, you will need to show that you've got some practical skills. This is called CPAC. And if you're in year 12, you will have been doing practicals that your teachers will have recorded the work that you've done. So there might be six core practicals you've been doing in year 12. Now these show that you've got certain skills, like you can set up apparatus correctly, you can follow written procedures, you can look at um, making accurate measurements. Now rather than having to do that over 12 or maybe 14 practicals that you have to do, as long as you can show that you've demonstrated that skill, that's good. Okay, so maybe there's an experiment that you've already set up in year 12, and you've already shown that you can follow written procedures, then actually that skill has been met. And provided you've um, done some practical work and your teachers have seen evidence that you've met the, the different kind of skills for the CPAC, then actually that means you will get your practical endorsement at the end of year 13. Okay, so it's not just for what you do in the exam about the kind of theoretical written down answers, but basically as long as you've been doing some practical work, you will still get evidence that you've got your um, practical endorsement as part of your A-level. Hopefully that makes sense. Basically, I suspect for a lot of you, you're going to be doing less practical work in class. There are going to be more demos where the teacher shows you the practical work. Um, and that will then hopefully then explain a lot of the physics. So they're the main changes. So GCSE and A-level, you're going to have to learn the same amount of content, but you're pretty much doing no practical work and you can watch demos instead. But if you want to find out about all your other subjects, these are the proposals here. Now, these proposals are not the definite 100% confirmed plan. Things are being adapted to, you know, actually listen to what you think is going to be important. So um, within the document itself, there's actually a link to um, the Ofqual website. And again, you can see, um, again, the full document here. I'll put a link beneath this video. There's also an option to respond online. So you can fill in your details and, you know, put in real details. If you're just putting, you know, pretend names, that's not going to help anybody. They will just discard your results. So, um, you know, if you're a student, uh, whichever school you're at, whatever, you know, put in your details there. And there's loads of stuff about data protection, all that good stuff. When it goes into the thing itself, there are then lots of questions where you can put your views across. So um, should the 2021 exams include more optional questions? I'm going to strongly agree with that. If you've got comments, put them in there. Um, should we change the length and number of exams? Should we change the exam timetable to maybe make it later or do we keep it um, the same? It really depends on what your views are. And basically, if you're, um, if you're doing this, at least you've had some say so that it's a fair system or as fair as it can be for everybody. Now, whatever they do, it's not going to be perfect. And I can see that, you know, if I was working off call, which thankfully I'm not, I'd be stuck between a rock and a hard place. I mean, you know, what we're trying to do is help, you know, I think what everybody's trying to do, so the government, um, your exam board, your teachers, they want you to have your best chance at showing your full potential because ultimately you need some grades to go forward to the next stage. You need to get GCSEs to go forward to A-level or further study at college. You need to get A-levels for maybe future jobs, for apprenticeships or for university applications. And they just want to make it as fair as possible to you people out there. So links are beneath this. Please let me know what you think. Um, and again, I don't have all the answers, but the, as soon as I find that information, I'll make videos, I'll let you know about it so you can be as involved in that process as much as possible. Until then, of course, by the sounds of it, you're going to have to learn the same amount of physics. So don't forget that I've got everything on my website to really help you get the full grades that you're capable of. So thank you very much. And uh, I'll speak again soon. And uh, yeah, keep you updated. Thank you.